We're in the process of fitting the wind braces at the moment. These wind braces or sway braces are what stop the A-frames or cruck frames moving in one direction or the other. Ooh, we almost. <laughs> the actual structure of a, an A-frame is very, very strong. That form, form of the letter A is very solid in that direction, but it can move from one side to the other. So the main purpose of these braces is to stabilise the building and stop any racking of the building. It's quite a slow process. Each one needs a little bit of individual work once you come to actually fit it in place. And with the nature of these wall plates we've got on this building, because they're curving, the, the angles between the, the jow posts and the wall plates um, are all slightly different, so everyone needs um, individually hand sculpting into place. Um, they're then temporarily ratcheted up with these ratchet straps until we've got them all in place and we're totally happy with the positions and the, the angles of them and then we'll drill through them and peg. Um, each tenon will have two five-eighths of an inch peg um, straight through there so there'll be four pegs into each and that will lock the whole building together. Once that's done, we can then take off all this temporary bracing and any ropes and the building will be freestanding at that point. This is our wind brace mitre box. Um, it's designed to be able to put a round pole, which we're going to use as a wind brace, into the box and then cut the exact angle across here at 45 in order that the tenons coming out each end go in at 90 degrees to the jowl post and the wall plate. There's two parts to the box. There's the, the main box itself, which the wind brace is sitting in, and then there's the template, which we can then use to offer up between an upright jowl post and a wall plate. And this particular template, we sit this piece onto a flat we've made on the jowl post or wall plate and then we can scribe around the inside to make the mortise for which this tenon will then fit into. For making mortises, the traditional method and one that we, we teach to start with on any of our builds is to work with hand chisels and mauls. And this involves using a corner chisel to um, cut the right angles and then dig out the mortise with a, a series of framing chisels. When you're doing a great deal of them, the commercial alternative is using what we call a chain mortiser, which is basically um, a chainsaw chain, um, although a lot thicker, which actually cuts out a great chunk um, out of the mortise in one go. These can be angled, orientated and moved quite easily once the mortiser is clamped or ratcheted on to the pole you're trying to cut the mortise out of.